Eureka! Nice, eh? This is the Buckman Spectrum 1 to 20.3 scale model of the Eureka locomotive. I first unboxed this model about 15 or more years ago, but here's the box it came in. There you go. <laughs> the Eureka was built by Baldwin in 1875 for the Eureka and Palisade Railway in Nevada. Then it was sent to the Sierra Nevada Wood and Lumber Company, where it worked for a number of years. Then the engine was bought by Warner Brothers, who used it in several movies. Then it went to California State Railroad Museum, who used it as a reference for restoring another very similar locomotive. Then it was sent to Old Vegas, an amusement park in Nevada, where in 1985 the building it was living in caught fire and the engine suffered quite a lot of damage. But a man called Dan Markov came to the rescue, bought the engine, and lovingly restored it to its former glory. And since that time has taken it on many visits to places such as Durango and Silverton and the Cumbries and Toltec. I've never seen the engine in real life, but I'd love to one day. But my family came to know about it after we visited the Durango and Silverton in 1998. And we bought a few videos old actual cassette tape videos from back then. Uh, one of them featured the Eureka visiting the line. So instantly became a fan. Fast forward a few years, when I was a teenager, I was collecting big hauler models by Backman with my plans for a G-scale model railway. My parents wouldn't let me build one in their garden because they thought it would ruin their flower beds, even though I insisted it would complement the garden, not ruin it. I still had to keep my models up in the attic. But anyway, I saw that Backman had this model, and I thought, when I have my own garden with a proper model railway in it, I'm going to definitely want this engine. So, knowing that it won't be available forever, I bought one. And even though it's a Spectrum range engine, it used to run with my big haul of stock um, perfectly fine. Now that's where I got confused because it being Spectrum, them being a big hauler, they worked fine together. I saw an item I quite liked which happened to be a Spectrum range. I think it was a, a flat car. Bought that. When it arrived it was noticeably bigger than the rest of my stock and the coupler height was different and it just wasn't compatible with this so-called Spectrum model. So I contacted the guy I bought it from, the model shop, and he explained the difference and so I had to send that one back and swap it for a big hauler model. So this being Spectrum range, why did Buckman make it with a lower coupler? Well, if you look at their presentation video, which I think is still available on their YouTube channel uh, from many years ago, it says that being a smaller engine, it doesn't look out of place with the smaller scale big hauler range. So with big hauler being the more affordable range, they're probably opening up the possibility of this model going to a bigger audience than keeping it purely for the more upmarket spectrum range. So, okay. And also they brought out passenger cars for Eureka and Palisade which Buckman never made passenger cars in the Spectrum range, so they had to be big hauler type coaches. So, okay, they wanted them to go for those, so that's, that makes sense if they get the coupler height the same. However, that to me, he wants to work in the more accurate 1 to 20.3 scale, where I want Spectrum range models. That's a little bit annoying. Now Spectrum range cars do come with a little step down 
coupler. So you can adapt down to this lower level, but then that does make them incompatible with AccuCraft and AMS models. So, I'm going to have to raise the height of this coupler in some way. So hopefully I'll fix that soon. Because I want to run this with a AMS Jackson Sharp coach with a caboose, just as you would see on a typical excursion on the Durango and Silton or the Cumbers and Toltec. But anyway, looking at the features of the model itself, it's very well detailed. It's got all metal linkages, working Stevenson's valve gear. It has LED headlight and LED lights in the firebox as well. And this model also comes DCC ready, which is something I'll look into in the future. Looking close up at a lot of the features around the model, you find that a lot of the little pieces are made of metal, which is nice, uh, including the bell. Around on the tender, these little boxes do actually open, so you could keep little bits and pieces in, although I wouldn't open them too often because the hinges are actually just very thin plastic, so as you open and close them they're going to wear away, and as one of mine has already done, they will break. But looking around the engine, there's so much detail around it, even the chains hanging onto the, uh, the trucks here. The cab is supposed to be a wooden cab, which it really doesn't look like wood. It just looks like plastic, as it's pretty much just a solid colour. So I may get around to fixing that in some way and just uh, making that look a little bit more realistic. I'll figure out how some way. And also the logs, when you get model logs, they very rarely look really real. These aren't too bad, so maybe a wash of paint over them to weather them a bit or replace them with actual wood. I'll look into that again at some point as well. One little detail missed off is the cow catcher on the front isn't the right type. You've got the vertical ribbing, whereas the Eureka actually has the horizontal ribbing, which Buckman did put on later models, so it's possible to find one available somewhere online. I think Buckman themselves are sold out of them, but if you're lucky enough to find one then you can replace one and make it look a bit more, uh, a little bit more true to the real one. But there you go, a very lovely model. Let's uh, see it running outside. Just before we see it running, I thought I'd just show you how it goes together. There we go. Now putting the locomotive and the tender together is a little bit tricky because there's this uh, electrical connection in between them. Now the tender actually has electrical contacts on its wheels as well as the main part of the locomotive. So you'll improve running if you can get this in. It's uh, easier said than done. Basically you've got to get right under. And then you connect the drawbar. Now the drawbar has two holes on it, so you can hook it up closer for more realistic. Or if you've got very tight curves, you can have it pulled back just a little bit more. So let's go up close. Ready to go.
there you go was that nice so hopefully next time you see this engine featured uh, I'll have the couple of height sorted so that I can run a Jackson Sharp coach right behind it so we'll see what happens until next time for more fun stuff, for trains and models and all sorts, please subscribe. Go on.